Hello and welcome to the point after Nate Wimberly joined by Jorge Andres and a big day here in the state of North Carolina. If you hadn't heard something big is happening. Oh yeah, something big. If you haven't heard you've been living under a rock because sports gambling is now legal in the state of North Carolina and for an hour now it has been live, meaning that as of noon Eastern time, you have been allowed to legally place a wager on a sports contest today. And because of that, we want to know the basics. What is sports gambling? What does it mean to help us make sense of it and teach us how to responsibly play? We're pleased to be joined by the professor himself, Steve Bittenbender of BetCarolina.com. Welcome to the program, Steve. It's a big day in North Carolina, right, Nate? Yeah, it is. Let's start with the easy stuff. What is a point spread? Well, Jorge, Nate, thanks for having me on. Uh, to answer your question, what is a point spread? Point spread is basically a handicap on both teams. You hear it often, it's probably the most common sports bet there is. You'll hear broadcasters say, so-and-so is a four-point favorite or four-point underdog. That means that team, in order to win the bet, if they're a favorite, they have to win by more than that many points. If they're an underdog, they have to lose by less than that. Perfect example, tonight's Hornets game, they're a four-point underdog to the Pistons. So if they keep it you know, within three points or less, or if they win outright, they win the bet. That's a big one. Okay, we hear about point spreads all the time, Steve, but we also hear about over and under. What is an over and under? What does that mean? Well, the most popular over under that you'll see a lot is the total, which is total points. So it's co very common in football. You'll see an, an, an over under usually in, in the 50s for how many points both teams will score in the football game. You're also going to see it now with some of the player props, which we'll get to here in a second. But it's another way to bet on the game. If you're not sure if either team will, will cover the spread, but you want to get some action in on it, the uh, over under is where you can go. We also hear about play the money line. I hear that all the time. What does that mean? And what does the plus minus mean? Sure. That's one that a lot of people, when they're familiar, when they talk about odds, they're used to seeing something like three to one, four to one, um, something along those lines. What, what you would see in horse racing. The odds that you'll see on a sports book are what's called American odds, which are the plus 350 or, or minus 150. If it's a plus number, if you bet $100, that's how much money you will get. If it's a minus sign, you bet that much money and you'll win $100. And with the money line, that is just a straight up bet. No points, you're picking that team to win that game. You mentioned prop bets, everybody says proposition bets. Uh, what does that mean and does that have any, uh, any relation to the outcome of an overall game? It, it has a relation to the uh, overall outcome of the game because it is based on the team's performance or a player's performance. Let's say you want to bet on uh, Armando Bacon when uh, the ACC tournament starts. Um, some of the sports books will have markets where you can bet how many points they'll score in a game. Or if you want to say, you know, the Hornets will shoot or will make this many three pointers in a game, you'll have that. Uh, potential also for uh, over under on total rebounds as well and a number of other stats within games. So it's kind of like a bet that uh, within a bet, if you will, a bet within a game that right. can entice it, make it make it a little more fun and more individual to a player. Right. And for a lot of people who've done a lot of daily fantasy stuff, that is uh, a go to bet for them. You know, they're more familiar with the players than they are the teams. So they're more comfortable uh, making a prop bet on a player. All right, Steve, come join us over here. Uh, interesting stuff, yeah. Nate. Yeah, let, let, let me go back to, 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 to the, 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 the plus 350. I saw that example. So mm -hmm. I place a $100 bet on, on 350 for the over and under. Right. What do I win if, I, if they go 351? Sure. If, if, um, well, or if, the two teams combined. Right. If, 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 if you win your over under and you bet the $100 yes. and it's a, a, it's a plus bet, yeah. then you will win that whatever that amount is. So your example okay. is plus 350. You also get your $100 back. Okay. So, um, you know, so you will get 450 back. Okay. And, you know, that's another thing. You do not have to bet $100. Mm -hmm. That's just how the odds are based. You want to bet a dollar, you want to bet 10, whatever. You can do that. And then it's a proportion of that. Okay. Now, here's a question for you. We're, 
you know, our studios are based in Uptown Charlotte, in mm -hmm. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. It's now legal to uh, place a bet and wager in North Carolina. However, you can't say the same for South Carolina, but here's a question. If somebody's watching and they're learning about FanDuel and DraftKings and Catawba Two Kings, and they live in Rock Hill, mm -hmm. they live in South Carolina, can they still place a bet or can they even go over the, the, the state line and place a bet? How does that work? Yes, they can. And I can tell you from experience, I uh, live in Louisville, Kentucky for four years. Indiana had sports betting before Kentucky did. Myself and uh, several of my friends and neighbors, we would drive across the bridge every weekend to place our bets on uh, football, basketball, baseball, what have you. If you're in South Carolina, you can go ahead and download those apps now. You can download whatever app you want. You can also open those apps up, make deposits in your home state, check out the odds in your home state. The only thing you can't do is make a bet. The sports books have geofencing. They will only allow bets within North Carolina. They'll stop you from making a bet otherwise. So you do have to go up I-77, come across maybe about a mile or so, <laughs> and uh, place your bet there. You know, if you got to get gas or you got to get a bite to eat. You know, hey, you know. You just know. make a stop at Carolyn's. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just exactly. go to Carolyn's. <laughs> exactly. Look, at the end of the day, there's a reason why sports gambling is here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's obviously the, the tax benefit uh, to the state as well. But at the end of the day, when we talk about money management, mm -hmm. when we talk about uh, responsible gaming, uh, walk us through that and how folks should look at this and play responsibly and really look at this not as a way to have an income, but as right. supplemental income, mm -hmm. perhaps. Right. And that's an excellent word there, Jorge. It is, this is something that is supplementing. This supplements your engagement with sports. It shouldn't supplant it. If you put $100 into an account, for example, I would bet no more than 3 to $5 on a specific wager. If you do live gaming, which is bets within the game, which, you know, who scores the next basket, who makes the next rebound, whatever, you know, go smaller because there's so many more of those bets that are available in a game. You know, also keep this within, you know, keep this within respectable limits. You know, besides that, I would also recommend that people bet on sports they know. You know, there's 45 different sports that North Carolina has approved. Uh, one of those is table tennis, for example. If <laughs> nope, you know, nope. <laughs> if you may you may you know know a lot about basketball, know a lot about football, uh, but you know table tennis. That's one of those things where it's kind of like going to Waffle House at 2 a.m. after a night out. <laughs> Sounds good, but rarely ends up well. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I would recommend stick with what you know. And then one last thing I would recommend also: uh, there are resources out there for people who have. Uh, issues or who this just becomes overwhelming for them. Um, great way to do that is to go online, morethanagame.nc.gov. That is the uh, problem helpline resource within the state of North Carolina. They'll give you the uh, information that you need in case you ever need that. Again, this is supposed to be a fun, enjoyable, supplemental way to be able to have fun and enjoy yes. the game, mm -hmm. not anything else. Uh, Professor Stephen uh, Bittenbender, thank you so much from BetCarolina.com. Mm -hmm. It's now live, folks. It's now here in the state of North Carolina. We're breaking it down and giving you that insight, Nate. Yeah, uh, Steve, thanks for all the information, man. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you for, for having me.